2017 will likely be remembered as a year that victims shattered the silence around sexual misconduct. This morning, we are taking a look at the far-reaching impact of the Me Too movement. It hit close to home for many of us, including some of us, all of us really, here at CBS This Morning. I decided that I had to speak up. If I didn't, who was going to do it? I think the question is, who protected the women and who protected Harvey Weinstein? The board fired co-founder Harvey Weinstein last night. Moore's accusers say the outspoken evangelical sought them out when they were as young as 14. <laughs> he said, you're just a child. In the coming weeks, I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. He grabs the back of my head and just sort of comes in and puts his lips right on mine and just sticks his tongue in my mouth. But Holly says he's stepping away from it all following the allegations. Laura was let go one week after CBS News fired Charlie Rose. Women cannot achieve equality in the workplace or in society until there is a reckoning and a taking of responsibility. The women who have not spoken up because they're afraid, I'm hoping that now they will take the step to speak out too that this becomes a moment of, of truth. There's a cultural shift happening right before our eyes right now. Pandora's box is opened and Pandora is pissed. Two of the reporters who started the national conversation with their bombshell reporting on allegations against Harvey Weinstein are here. Jody Cantor is a New York Times reporter and CBS News contributor. Megan Toohey is a New York Times investigative reporter. And the two of these women broke this story wide open. I love Jane Rosenthal's comment that Pandora is pissed. Welcome to you both. Nora and I were both at the Hearst Luncheon recently where you two got a standing ovation from women and men in the room congratulating you on the work that you've done. So it's interesting to read, Jody and Megan, that before the story broke, both of you said, is anybody going to care about this? Isn't this just a Hollywood story? Nobody even knows who Harvey Weinstein is. Talk about that, Jody, a little bit. Some people said it's an open secret. Everybody in Hollywood has known for a long time. They told us they were that we were naive and idealistic, that we would publish our little story and life little would story. go on. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and Megan, what it has done is essentially un unleashed a tidal wave of reporting and allegations. That's right. I mean, I think this country is having, well, it goes beyond the United States at this point, um, is having a real reckoning. I mean, how was it that for so many years there were men in a variety of industries who were able to get away with predatory behavior basically unchecked? Mm -hmm. it's, it's obviously not the first story on this subject, but it's changed things. And why do you think it's changed things? What's, what's the climate that suddenly made this reckoning occur? you think? Well, first of all, things had been building for a while. For example, a few months before we published the Harvey Weinstein story, our colleagues published a story revealing the settlement trail that Bill O'Reilly had accumulated yep. at Fox. And so we were beginning to see that, first of all, we were able to report a little more on these issues, and that also the women were being believed, and that we saw the beginnings of accountability, too, that this could actually affect the careers of men who had held power for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I asked you uh, once in a conversation, I said, do you think there's a statue of limitations on behavior? Do you think there is? You know, I think the stories of things that happened a long time ago are very important. Mm -hmm. I appreciate hearing women's stories from the 60s, from the 70s, from the 80s, because I think these are the foundations of our culture, and we have to understand them. And part of the project now is that all of us together are kind of reconstructing the secret history of how women have been harassed in the American workplace and how it's held women back in the public sphere in so many ways. Well, I think one of the points, too, that, that you've made, too, is that it, talk about the narrative, right? I mean, who, who decides what movies are made? Who decides who's in those movies? I mean, and take that through every industry about who are the decision makers about who's included and who's excluded. Yeah, there was an interesting moment in this past year as this story continued to unfold uh, when Bill O'Reilly was forced to step down following our colleagues, you know, sensational reporting on all these settlements that he had paid out to women over the years. And it made me think back to the previous year when I was doing coverage of Trump's treatment of women, including allegations of sexual misconduct against him. And Bill O'Reilly had gone on TV and said, Megan Toohey should not be able to do this coverage because she's a feminist. And I think now we're seeing other questions about who, who you know, who should be allowed to do, you know, who have been the voices uh, of, of various issues uh, in coverage and entertainment uh, over the years. Are you concerned at all? Because now I keep hearing from men and from women, too, about a potential Me Too backlash. 
uh, to Nora's point about allegations that happened long ago, and that now a woman makes an accusation, and almost immediately men are saying, we don't get due process, we immediately get the death penalty, and that not all the allegations are the same. Some behavior is predatory and criminal, and some is just bad, jerky, bad behavior and inappropriate. What do you say about that, Megan? Are you concerned? Well, I think that's a, I think that's a great question, and I think, you know, rounding the corner into 2018, we're at a remarkable crossroads here. For the first time, I think, maybe ever, you have a culture in which women now feel comfortable stepping forward and making allegations, uh, when in the, whereas in the past they felt like they would be the ones to suffer consequences to their careers and, and worse if they spoke out. And so I think, though, moving forward, it's going to be really important to make sure that, A, there are ways to categorize these different allegations, that there's a difference between allegations of rape and and, you know, inappropriate comments in a workplace. Sexual misconduct can be a broad category, and I think we're going to have to figure out subcategories that go underneath it. Mm -hmm. And I think we're also going to make sure that we, moving forward in workplaces, that there are, um, that there is a due process that, and ways in which both the accused and the accusers are legally protected. Mm -hmm. But the women we worked with who came on the record talking about these allegations, they did not do so lightly. Yeah. They, were yeah. they were very yeah. brave and they were very serious about it. They weren't weren't discussing um, no. minor incidents that they that were easy to brush off, and the reason they spoke up was that they wanted to help other women. Megan. Selma Hayek, in the New York Times, accusing Har Harvey Weinstein of a monster. This is a story that she has been reluctant to share for a while, and it, it wasn't like she just laid it out there. It took some time convincing her to, to tell yeah. that story, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that there's been, I think it's been a rare case in which there was one or two women who came forward with an allegation and, and it stopped there. I mean, oftentimes what we've seen is that, you know, that the first or second allegation are then followed by mul multiple allegations. Megan, quickly, you mentioned the reporting on President Trump, allegations that are still out there, which he continues to deny. Where do you see this going? Yeah. Well, it's important to revisit the more than 10 women who came forward with allegations of sexual misconduct of, of, against Trump during the presidential race. And not only that, but as we, we know, as we remember, he was actually captured on audio tape uh, bragging about this type of behavior um, on, a, you know, inappropriate touching and actually even sexual assault. And, you know, he denies it. He says he's actually never engaged in any behavior like that. In fact, he, you know, he turned around and accused uh, every single woman who came forward with allegations against him as liars and said that they were politically motivated. Uh, he threatened to sue the accusers. He threatened to sue me in the New York Times. And so I think it's a reminder of how when allegations are made in a political context, I mean, that was one of the most polarizing races of in modern political history, um, how sometimes the accusers can be framed as politically motivated. And But this story is not going away. Those accusers are getting more attention now in the last couple months. And that story, I don't think, is going to go away. Megan Tui, Jody Cantor, thank you both very much. Thank you.